so recently I feel like I've only been doing temporary nails using peel off gel but today I decided to show you guys like a full set that's gonna last four to six weeks this is what we use and this is what we do at the salon so this is approved by all of us and all of my clients first you want to prep the nails which I didn't show in the video but if you guys want to see how to nail prep I'll make a video on that separately and you want to use nail prep which is like nail dehydrator and then a bonder and then i'm using this g jelly base and this is my favorite base gel i use it before gel x application and then i also use it for a natural nail gel application as well i feel like there's so many methods of applying gel x but i felt like this one worked the best for me i know some people don't use base gel in the beginning but i do but also i'm not really precise with this step it doesn't really need to like cover the whole nail you don't have to take your time with it and then i'm using the apre natural stiletto short gel x tips and this has been my favorite shape recently i really like how sharp it is but it's not like too sharp where it's gonna poke everything it just makes your nails look skinnier and leaner and your nails just look so feminine when you put the shape on I'm still using the Zilla Beauty Cordless Nail Drill in gray. I've tried using the pink one before, but I like the gray one better. And then I'm using a sanding band to edge the gel X tips. And doing this really helps with the retention. And then I'm applying the bonder to the edge tips as well. This actually seems like a lot of work, but it's what makes the gel X tips stay. And then I'm using the Diami Feel So Good Base Gel. I cannot stop talking about how good this base gel is. This is one of the reasons why my Gel X lasts so long. But this base gel is very thick, so make sure to use a little amount. Don't use too much or else it's gonna go over the natural nail too much like I did. I think I used too much because it's been so long since I did my own nails. And depending on your natural nail curve, you might need a little more gel than other people or you might need less but yeah i just apply it and flash cure it for three to five seconds and once everything is on i just cure it once again for a minute and then after that now it's time to seal the cuticles and i use this bit from a prey it's easy sealing the cuticle for yourself because you can feel it on your own fingers but when you're doing it on other people make sure not to go over the same area for too long because it is gonna get hot i put my speed on 10,000 rpm and i felt like that was the best speed for me but i do make sure to be careful and then after sealing the cuticles i just roughen up the surface using a sanding band and i feel like this step is really important to make sure there are no chips after you apply the polish instead of doing this you can also choose to apply a bonder instead but i only do that when i need to do like a clear design where no scratches can be seen on the background and then after that i just file the edges and i do make it a little bit sharper because once i apply the design it kind of gets a little thicker and then after that i just buff the edges as well and that is the gel x application after this it's pretty much like the design and whatever you want to do and this actually lasts so long depending on how you take care of the nails and i've actually seen people go up to two months with this method so if you're doing your nails at home and you have issues with retention i really recommend this method and these products specifically and then i'm using the base gel from f gel and this has a very watery consistency so i really like applying this on top of the gel x i like how it doesn't make the tips bulky or too thick after the base gel and it also applies really well and evenly okay next is the color and i used this color for the base and i found out that it was a little too like peachy and nudie i wanted something a little more pink so after applying this for the first layer i changed the color to another one but today i decided to do this simple airbrush design and i realized that i've never airbrushed on camera before while i use it all the time in my salon airbrushing is so popular and it's so easy once you get the hang of it but in the beginning i did struggle and i did not want to use airbrushing but 
it just makes the design so flawless and it just looks so good once you get the hang of it and i also saw this tiktok trend where people were trying to match the color of their lipstick to a bunny's tongue and i thought i would do the same for nails because i just thought it was such a pretty color and now i'm getting to the second layer of the base color and i decided to change over to this like pink nude because this is kind of like the look i was going for i don't know why i chose that first color but i really liked this color and it's my first time using Mayer polishes on camera but I just got this Mayer full set for my salon and I love it so much I don't know if you guys saw the display, I posted it on Instagram and TikTok it was like all over my social media pages but it's so pretty and the colors are so pretty as well especially the syrup colors like this one, it is so pretty and it looks like so like jelly like and then after that i'm getting on to the airbrush and this airbrush i bought on amazon it was like 60 dollars i think but i think there are cheaper ones out there and i'll link it down below and then i'm putting in acetone and make sure not to put too much put a little bit so that you don't have to use too much polish and have it go to waste and i'm using these two pink colors and i'm just mixing it the thing i like about airbrushing is that you can mix different colors to make the perfect color that you need and i felt like it was too light pink so i decided to add this dark pink and another thing is that it's gonna airbrush a little lighter than what you see so make sure to go a little bit darker than what you want and when you pull on the handle make sure to pull only a little bit just do like very slight pulls or else too much air is gonna come out and then too much color is gonna go in one place and it's not gonna look as blended a lot of people actually struggle with the proportion of acetone and paint and i really struggle with that in the beginning as well but you just kind of have to get the hang of it and just try multiple times until it works when you put too much acetone it's gonna look watery when you put it on on, kind of like this like when you spray it on it's gonna look too wet almost and then when there's too much paint it's gonna look too splattery like you're gonna see like paint splatters not as much as this picture that i'm showing but it's gonna look something like that so make sure you use the right amount and right now i'm using the crazy top standard it makes everything so glossy and this is like the only top coat that i use i feel like this is such a simple design this is probably like the most simple design i've ever done on myself but i love how this came out like i love the color so much and the airbrush came out so well this was actually like my favorite design i've done on myself for a while like i couldn't stop looking at it but i really hope this video helped in terms of airbrushing or retention if you need like a more detailed video on airbrushing maybe i can make that as well but thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye